from Bud's Creek Motocross Park in Bud's Creek, Maryland. A very picturesque setting for our fifth round of motocross action. 38 points down after Glenn Helen. Scott Sheik then picked it up at Mount Morris. And the Suzuki point standings has him only trailing by two. Far this season. So let's take a look at the Suzuki track map. Well, the big news here, Art, is they're going the opposite direction. It's back to the original direction and the way the track was designed. And most of the jumps have been made quite a bit steeper this year, a lot more air time. And of course, what you're looking at here is flat. There's a lot of elevation here in Maryland. So the 125s, it's getting nervous time, getting ready for their first moto here at Bud's Creek. A very famous track that held many GPs throughout the years as well as the AMA motocross. Getting set now. They're all ready to go. Who can get the whole shot going up the hill? Oh, Carmichael in great position in the middle. Huffman to the inside. Casey Johnson just to the left of Carmichael. It's Johnson. Oh, how did he get through there? He gets the whole shot. Bogard got hung up on the inside. He was on the inside gate, however. Number 32 in first place is Casey Johnson. Hoffman in second place, Willow in third. Hey, the big names Carmichael, Wyndham, Craig, and Rennert are all behind through those three riders. That was amazing. It looked like Carmichael had the best position for the whole shot, but he came out of the first corner in fifth, so it got pretty busy up there, and Johnson came out smelling like a rose. Well, a bad break for Scott Sheik of Team Honda is in 10th position now as they come racing down the hill. Sheik's pretty tough, though. This is a track where you can pass. It's not a one-line situation. Uh, only a couple off cambers where it's a little bit single file, but here there's plenty of place to pass, and Sheik uh, coming off that last win in Mount Morris. He's going to have plenty of confidence here today, and if he sees Carmichael ahead of him, he'll get on the gas a little extra if he needs to. Casey Johnson, our leader, number 32. Johnson with a second-place finish, his best of the year at Glen Helen. He had a mix-up with Wyndham in the second moto, but got up for a fourth-place finish to capture that second overall. In second place is number 17, Damon Huffman. He's had all kinds of problems this year. Missed the first two races at Gatorback and Hangtown because of injury. Came back with a 14th and a 23rd in the first two races he participated in. So he's looking to get back on the podium here. Well, he certainly hasn't been setting the world on fire, but how can you when you've been so hot and cold and injured? Every time he comes back, he's nursing something, trying to get healthy again, race his way back into shape, and that's a tough thing to do. Look at Sheik down Sheik. the inside. Oh. And look at Wyndham cutting right in front of Sheik. They are on the move. Well, this is such a steep off camera. You see Willow and Wyndham following him, trying to use that berm. Then Sheik just takes the line that didn't really exist, cuts him off, and Wyndham had enough uh, balance, I guess, to just make a pivot right there on that off camera and square him off and get him right back. Or the desire to make a pass. Wyndham just created a third line on that off camber. Here's Wyndham taking on Willow number 45 and makes the pass over the jump. Wyndham sticking that Yamaha up amongst the Kawasaki's. Johnson, a pro circuit Kawasaki rider. Huffman, team Kawasaki. Pingree, pro circuit Kawasaki. And then Wyndham and Sheik makes the pass on Willow. So we've got some good early battles here in moto number one for the 125s. That's looking good so far for Huffman too, still in contact with Johnson. Great opportunity for Johnson here. He hasn't gotten the best of starts. He's had a few good ones here and there, but what a great feeling is to lead a race like this. It's all so close. These are really fun races to be involved in. The first few laps. Craig Decker goes down. Bad time to go down. I always say that. Go down early. 10 or 15 guys go by. Let's take a look at the field summary. Casey Johnson, our leader, will be back after these words. Back at Butts Creek, Maryland for round number five of AMA Motocross and a great start to this first moto. Pingree in third. Wyndham is on the come in fourth. He's looking for opportunity to move into third with Sheik right behind him. Now Carmichael is right behind all of this pack in pretty good position. Look at the high line there. Boy, that is amazing. It, Wyndham is able to just make that bike stick like glue. Watch this. Leans it all the way over. See how he's sitting way to the high side of the bike, way out to the left. He's waiting that downhill ski. Basically, for all these skiers out there, that's what's happening. He's waiting that outside peg, getting all that traction. That's what enables him to stay high. Casey Johnson, still our leader now, as Wyndham starting to take on number 17, Damon Huffman. Wyndham just roars by Huffman through the air. Well, that's a place you don't expect it. You come up the hill, and you know you got a corner coming up. Uh-oh, Wyndham's little mistake right there. Johnson in the lead. 
Huffman in second. Pingree moves into third with Wyndham now coming back trying to roar. So after Wyndham making all those heroic moves, all that work to get himself up into second, a little mistake right there, and he drops his spots right back. Able to keep right on going, though, Kevin Wyndham. The next target right in front of him, Damon Huffman, Pingree, and Carmichael you see now in the picture, number 70. And he's just splattered with mud, too, trying to look for different lines. They put some water on the track here and there to keep the dust down, not only for the riders, but for the spectators, too. It's pretty hot out here today, and it's going to get worse. And Carmichael has just gotten showered. <laughs> sure covers up that front plate. Here's Huffman in second with Wyndham right behind him, Sheik, and then Ricky Carmichael in fifth. Ricky looking very strong. The question I have, what happened at the start? It looked like he was going to get the whole shot for sure. Somebody must have bumped him or cut in front. Yeah, I think he got muscled around that first corner. You come out of that and he's head down the hill where it enters the track for the first time, and it could have just been a, a bad line, and everybody went right around him. But that's the price you pay if you don't get on the gas and get out front early. If they do any water into the track, you're going to get sprayed. Look at Huffman. Battling with Wyndham, trying to hold him off. Whoa, same place, same move. Kevin Wyndham leaps by Huffman. Well, I can't believe Huffman left that door open again. He may not have realized that, that Wyndham was that close to him heading up that hill or he would have just cut off the line. And look at Sheik, he keeps square in this corner right here. Sheik into third with Carmichael on the move. Willow's bike is really smoking. Oh, and uh, Ryan Duff, number 541, goes down in the corner. Well, he probably couldn't see the line very good. All that smoke in front of him. And then number 67, Paul Curry, came through there and got stuck. Look, at he's having all kinds of trouble trying to get going again on the side of that hill. Looked like Willow was heading back the other way towards the pits. Kevin Wyndham's 1997 after the 125 Western Supercross title has really been a bummer. It's been a little bit of bad luck. Um, you know, I, Gainesville, uh, not really good at Gainesville. I just had a kind of a hurt ankle, so going into left turns, I was a little bit hesitant and uh, just enough to give those guys an edge. You know, you can't got to be on your game to, to even run with these guys. So uh, the second race uh, had electrical problems, didn't get to race the first moto, so that was a big problem. Uh, San Bernardino, I had a 12-second lead on lap two, feeling great, walking away, and uh, hit a rock. Rock crushed my pipe. Bike didn't even hardly make it up the uh, Twin Peaks, I guess they called it. And, uh, on the third lap, Allie changed my pipe, did a great job, you know. Couldn't do it without them, but just, you know, going one full lap slow, I was like almost in dead last. Came back to 12th, and then, uh, you know, the fourth race was mud, and I guess, you know, I just didn't do as good as I'd like to have. So, uh, by the time I get my game going, huh? <laughs> Kevin Windham, quite a personality and quite a competitor as well, as you can see right now. Kevin Windham is really putting the heat on Casey Johnson, number 32. He's looking for the right opportunity. If I were to say where he would pass, well, you got your choice. He's passed Huffman twice on the finish line jump. He's passed two riders on the off big off camber turn. And they're heading for that right now. As soon as they go up around this left-hand corner, watch, he typically squares this corner off, cuts it a little tighter. Actually, he follows Johnson to there this time. Watch right here. This is where he's been slick. Oh, Kevin Wyndham inches in front of Casey Johnson, just enough so Casey has to let off a little bit. Here's another look at Wyndham. Just gets up to the very top of this off camera. Finds a little bit of a rut right there. Treats it as a berm. That's what gives him all that traction across the top. Makes those passes every time. In five laps, he's gone up there so much, he's made his own berm, I think. <laughs> the hill climber in first place, Kevin Wyndham. You saw the uh, graphic there is Sheik now. We'll try to take on Casey Johnson from the third place position. And there is Ricky. Ricky Carmichael putting on the speed. The pressure on Scott Sheik. Well, it is a hot day, and Carmichael is trying about as hard as he can. So aggressive to that mechanics area. Right there, he's reaching up to clear that vision. You can see he's just covered. The difference between he and Sheik. Looks like uh, Carmichael's riding at Mount Morris still. And a good move by Carmichael to move into third place. Scott Sheik, though, will hang with him. Out in front, Kevin Windham, Casey Johnson in second. Could this be a good position for Kevin Wyndham to gain a little bit of lead because Casey Johnson is just good enough to take the good line away? I think the way Carmichael's riding right now and the pressure from Sheik, I don't know if Johnson's good enough to take the best line away from those two, but uh, certainly he'll hold them up a little bit, and that will be to the advantage of Wyndham. A great crowd you see here at Bud's Creek. Excited they have beautiful weather to witness this by. Ricky Carmichael in third place. 
Ricky starting off like a house of fire in the beginning of the season and then had that one very bad race at Mount Morris in the mud. It allowed the rest of the field to catch up points wise. Right now, here's the battle with Casey Johnson. This is the jump where, of course, Doug Henry flew all the way to the bottom. Guys really getting on the brakes coming up to that. It's fourth gear wide open through that valley. And Carmichael continues to work on Johnson inside and outside. You notice he doesn't follow him ever. He's going through big water puddles, whatever it takes. That's probably why he's so muddy, and he makes the pass finally by not following. The good inside move by Ricky Carmichael. Oh, he started off the season with a house of fire and then had the real bad performance at Mount Morris in the mud, but that gave the rest of the field a chance to tighten up a bit and make this a good points race. Ricky Carmichael, though, trying to get back on top. It could be a great finish with Wyndham in first place right now. And Huffman slipping back to fifth. Welcome back to Bud's Creek, Maryland. We're in the first moto of 125 action. Kevin Wyndham, our leader. Ricky Carmichael has moved into second place. Here's Huffman in fifth. And Michael Craig, number 15, starting to move up the ranks now to test Huffman. Craig, not with the best of start, uh, working his way back up in. See these guys pulling tearaways already. Coming out of all those corners, it's going to get choppier and choppier as the day continues. These berms will get deep. Sometimes oh, Craig, almost, he got crossed up a little bit in that berm. Well, he came in there and hit it early, and he got on the gas soon. What happens is the suspension compresses, and as it rebounds, you get on the gas, and the front end just wants to do what it did to him just right there. But at least he was lean to the inside, didn't have to let off too much. See in our field summary, Casey Johnson still holding on to third with Scott Cheek in fourth. Here's the battle for fifth. As Kevin Windham starts to pull a larger lead out front. Marty Reed in the mechanics areas with Windham's mechanic, Ali Seymour. Is that, is that Skip Norfolk trying to give you tips? Yeah, he was telling me about some lines over there that Kevin was using. He said he had some really good lines out there. So. Well, he's finally opened up a lead. The first half of this race, though, has been a real dogfight. Yeah, everybody's going fast. You know, everybody wants to win, so. <laughs> You know, the only bad part about this is we have the worst vantage point of everybody. Without your radio communication, you don't know what's going on out there, do you? Yeah, you can't see anything at all from here. So with my radio, they tell me where he is. Well, put the ears back on because you got a race to run. Okay, thanks. That is one thing, the mechanics. It's a mystery sometimes on some tracks as to what their rider is doing. Oh, Wyndham, our leader, is backing down the hill, holding his hand up, making sure that everybody can see him. There's Craig going around him. He is dead on the track. What a bad break. It must have been the mechanical because he was upright. And our new leader is Ricky Carmichael. Boy, so in the beginning, Carmichael just trailed that entire pack of uh, Dyson for the lead. Worked his way up there slowly, and now a little bit of good luck. Got him with a nice lead out front. I can't, couldn't really tell what happened to Wyndham. It was obviously bike trouble, though. It looked like both wheels were moving. It wasn't locked up. Hard to say. Look how far down the hill Carmichael goes. That's the off-camera, the same one where Wyndham was going way high. He's probably going 40 feet further to the outside. He's able to charge down the hill a little quicker and get a good drive back up from the berm at the bottom. So if you take that much further distance, you've got to be in more of a hurry. So it's, There's that's, Kevin Wyndham. He's okay. He's, oh, it's a chain. Broken chain. Put Kevin Wyndham out. What else could happen to this kid? Well, I don't even want to bring that up because something probably will. He's not had a good season here in the outdoors. And the chain, that's weird. It, it seems like if a chain was going to break, it'd break early in the race from compressing. Uh, maybe it was too tight or something. But we've already got some laps in the books here. So something must have got in there to, to force that to break. Okay, so we've got Ricky Carmichael out in front. Here's Huffman getting by Sheik. And Sheik has got some kind of problem. Well, I can see he's still got a chain. You can see through the wheel. He's... Looked like when he came out of the corner, he was trying to clutch it and get a little more horsepower, and the bike just died on him. So we'll have to check a little later on. Maybe Marty can find out uh, what happened there. Here's Kevin Wyndham coming up the hill. What happened, Kevin? Chain broke. I don't know how. I don't know. This. Very disappointed, Kevin Wyndham. 
It's not only disappointing for Kevin Windham, too. It's got to be disappointing for the fans anticipating that great shootout between Ricky Carmichael and Kevin Windham. As we take a look at number 22, Team Suzuki's Tim Ferry. He was a 125 champion in Supercross. Ferry in fifth spot, but right behind him, an interesting uh, situation here. Ronnie Titchener. Number 107. He hasn't raced in the United States in quite a while, so he's got to sport the zip code number plate. But uh, <laughs> Ronnie is a fantastic rider and uh, ventured over to Japan, won a national championship over there, had a lot of success. And he's back over here just riding for fun, I guess. And shoot, when you're able to to uh, just jump back into the action, having missed quite a bit, and run up front like this, it's got to be fun. He looks in great shape after getting all that yen in the bank. Uh, He's uh, racing with uh, his cohorts here in the United States. Had a 19th at Mount Morris. That was his first race back. He got a water in the carburetor and uh, put him out of moto number one down to 39th place, or he might have had a better overall finish in that race. But he's really giving Ferry a pretty good tussle here. Tetchner, former Team Suzuki rider, battling the current 125 Team Suzuki rider. Marty Reed's in the Honda pits. But we've got action in the 125 pits in the factory team Honda. You can see that the motor is coming out of the 29 of Scott Sheik. And Bobby, I know you're busy, but uh, can you tell me exactly what happened? Well, we're not quite sure. It's seized up, but we already got the new motor in here, and hopefully, you know, this one will take us to the win in the second moto. Is this the first time this has happened to you guys this year? The first DNF we've had, so we're perplexed as much as anybody else is. But it's definitely disappointing, though. Well, he's still got a smile on his face. The crew's at work. He'll definitely be ready for the second motor. That's the great thing about motorcycles. The motors don't weigh as much as these car machines do, you know, like 3,000 pounds or whatever. Yeah, but Marty, it's still the same end result. They don't run. Yeah, they don't run. <laughs> and a very big disappointment for Scott Sheik, who had moved within two points of Ricky Carmichael in the points chase. Now a severe blow as far as his championship chances are concerned. Ricky Carmichael, number 70, his first full year as a professional in motocross. It's hard to tell right now if Ricky has any idea what's happened to Wyndham or Sheik. Sheik closing within two points and then this DNF. And for him to be sitting there back in the pits and hearing it on the announcer system that Carmichael's leading this thing, it's got to make him sick. Johnson in second, Huffman in third. AMA Motocross on ESPN2 is being brought to you by Motorcycle Mechanics Institute. Quality training for the motorcycle industry. Welcome back to Bud's Creek. Art Ekman along with David Bailey and Marty Reed. As we take a look at the battle now between Casey Johnson and Damon Huffman, our leader is still Ricky Carmichael here in moto number one of the 125s down that treacherous hill known for the most infamous accident in the motocross history as they come back up on this tremendous up and down terrain track. Huffman who started to slip back early starting to find his pace again work his way back in there. You see him getting showered right there anytime you get behind him in that roost well you just have to duck rocks everything bouncing off your helmet. You can imagine what that feels like on your chest even the 125 spit up a pretty good roost. That's the advantage of not following. We saw Carmichael one side or the other and Right here, Huffman's been doing a little bit more following. And now he's starting to take that line that Wyndham made famous across the top there. Wasn't good enough to make the pass, but it's a good idea. Anytime you can be behind somebody, keep the pressure on by looking for new lines, you force them to, to start paying attention to what you're doing and uh, hopefully pressure them into a mistake. Boy, you really have to put the outside pressure on your balance on the top of that hill and still maintain some power. We just saw Ricky Carmichael go through, taking the white flag, final lap. The real battle for second place right now. Damon Huffman, Casey Johnson, Johnson number 32. Huffman right on his rear tire. Huffman still coming up that finish line hill on the right side. Sometimes there's a, a rider will pass you or several riders will pass you using a different line and it's really hard to make the change. He's not comfortable with having to switch to the other side of the racetrack, but in this last lap, Bet Huffman's going to do anything he can to try to work his way into second place. It'd be a great ride for him, especially with the season he's had outdoors. All these riders running for the podium, taking advantage of the mishaps, really, of Kevin Windham and Scott Sheik here in the first moto. And of course, the guy who won this thing with a 1 1 last year, Steve Lampson, has been out for the last two races. This is his third race out with injury on the season. 
I think this track really suits Carmichael's style too, Art. I mean, it's just a lot of jumps. The soil's very similar to what he practiced on in, at home in Florida. And you know, even though he's got covered with mud early in the race, didn't stop him. Another Moto win. He's going to stretch that points lead. The checkers for Ricky Carmichael. His sixth Moto win out of nine total motos. Incredible. He stretches his lead to 27 points over the DNF of Scott Sheik. Johnson in second. Huffman, his best finish of the year in third. Let's go to Marty with our winner. Well, down here in victory lane, and uh, we talked about it before the start of the race, that you were going to be patient. It paid off at the beginning. Yeah, uh, the first lap I got blasted a couple times, and, you know, a few people got by me, and I'm like, well, it's a 30-minute race, and I know some of the, I was wondering if some of them get tired, and I don't know, you know, I passed everybody pretty quick, except Kevin, I don't know what happened to him, but. I got out in the lead once he uh, broke and then rode my own race and felt good. Back on track, will you change anything for a second moto? Uh, no, I think that, that worked pretty good, so we're going to try it again. This was Casey Johnson's best performance since a second overall at San Bernardino Glen Helen. Marty's moving over toward Casey. Down here with second place, Casey Johnson. A nice, nice run by our count, uh, your best finish in a moto. Yeah, this is uh, my best finish in a moto. Um, I did get a second overall at Glen Helen. Um, but I mean, what it takes is a start, and I got it. And uh, man, it feels so good just to run in the lead. You know, I was kind of pumping up in the beginning. I've never been out in the lead before. And uh, when Lyndon passed me, I tried to hang with him. I was still a little tight. And then Ricky passed me. and uh, But slowly, I kind of you know, sat into a pace, and I felt pretty good towards the end. Well, you mentioned it takes a great start, and it does, but it also takes stamina, and you don't look winded at all. Um, well, when you're running up towards the front, you can run their pace, you know, it doesn't take a lot of energy, you can find their lines, you know, most of the guys that run to the, on the top have good lines, and you can, you know, pick up those and uh, save a little energy. A 1-2 for Pro Circuit, Kawasaki. On the comeback trail, number 17, Damon Huffman, this is the first time he's been in the top three. We talked before the start of the race, and you said, hey, podium's what I'm shooting for, one down, one to go. Yeah, you know, actually, uh, that first one's always a little tough for me. Um, but, you know, I'm real happy with the way I rode. Uh, you know, I'm finally feeling like the old Damon here. And uh, I've been doing a few things different at home. And, uh, you know, my mechanic, Brian, and my KX125 worked really good today. So our first 125 moto in the books, can Ricky Carmichael sweep them both? As the 125 riders get ready down in the gate area, these were scenes from the pits as the mechanics readied these 125 machines for moto number two. Of course, it's a very busy time for them and the riders trying to get some rest. Also explaining here, Tim Ferry, what went on in that first moto. Didn't look that messy in the first moto that did it. No, I mean, Pichondas was not interested at all. <laughs> Looking the other way. <laughs> Michael Brandis, Team Chaparral's bike getting prepared there as we switch over back to Team Suzuki. Rock Sellers number 80 on his way down to the gate. Having some bad breaks in that first moto. And the redhead, RC, looks pretty relaxed. I don't think he had to use very much energy in the first moto. The first few laps, he said he just played it cool and then everyone broke down and had trouble and he rode his own race. Scott Sheik testing the gate. Marty's got some concern for Carmichael. Potential trouble for Ricky Carmichael. During the parade lap, he stopped short. The reason, the clutch lever was very loose. They made an adjustment, but they're not sure if he's going to be able to go. They've got their fingers crossed. What a time for uncertainty. As we get set for moto number two of the 125s, Ricky Carmichael, our winner in moto number one, in case you just tuned in. He got some good brakes, though. Wind them a broken chain, Sheik's engine, just wouldn't work after a while, and they're off for moto number two. Let's see who gets the whole shot. Carmichael, it is Ricky Carmichael holding on to that middle position, getting the whole shot here in moto number two. Number 70 in front of Casey Johnson, number 32. Damon Huffman again, a good start, number 17. And there's Michael Craig, number 15. Ferry is behind Craig, number 22. Stefan Roncon and Ron Titchener with good starts. And the guys that got the worst starts out of everybody pretty much was uh, Kevin Windham and Scott Sheik. Terrible gate positions because of their finish in the first moto and really paid the price. Although I saw Windham come down the hill, he made a few heroic moves obviously in those couple of corners right after the start to move up in the field. He's almost mid-pack at the moment. 
Michael Craig, number 15, Honda of Troy. And Ron Cotta, his teammate, right behind him. It's the first we've been able to mention the Frenchman's name. Having a tough moto number one, placing in seven. Ferry approaching Damon Huffman. Ferry's got to ride with more confidence after that fine performance in moto number one. And now Carmichael out front having to work his way through the traffic, the first moto to get into the lead. This time he's got clear sailing and the way they run right now, Casey Johnson in second, Huffman in third, the same way they finished in the first moto. And you heard Casey talk about the fact that he didn't use that much energy and it was just great to get out there and run with the, with the leaders. And now that he's had a chance to do that, I'd be anxious to see this time if he can hang on a little longer. Well, we're st starting to get down to the rocky portions too. A lot of rebound in some of those areas. Damon Huffman, number 17, Team Kawasaki, coming off his best performance of the outdoor season with Tim Ferry right behind him and a great, great crowd on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Yeah, it looks like Huffman's riding in a T-shirt or something. He's got his sleeves either cut off or pulled all the way up. Look at his left arm. Hot out there. Anytime you can get a lot more wind up in the sleeves and it, a lot of guys don't like it tight on around their wrists and almost everyone just cuts the cuff right off their jersey before they even wear those things just to try to alleviate any arm pump. I think most of it's psychological though. And the two Honda of Troy riders picking up the caboose side of this pack the lead pack with Ricky Carmichael in the lead. Ferry putting a lot of pressure on Huffman coming down that downhill into the corner. Giving it all he's got right now. Ooh. Craig almost lost the behind there. Well, what happens, he came out of that corner, he was off to the back of the seat, he was still leaned into it. Ferry goes down. Tim Ferry goes down, a bad break for him. And the two Honda of Troy riders make the pass. Looks like he may have bent his clutch lever up too, just as he's got going. He either runs it a little high or it got bent up when he went down right there. But what happens is they put a little bit of water on the racetrack here and there and it's, it's slick and it takes a few laps for all that to get worked in for you to realize where the slick spots are. And it, Craig came out of that corner, got a little sideways. He's sitting off to the back of the seat. And uh, anytime that thing gets sideways, your whole body goes with it. But he's able to save it. And then Barry, same thing on a little off camera right there. You can see where they put water down. Gets pretty slick and just lost that front end. Way out in front now is Ricky Carmichael starting to pull a big lead. Our battles for second place. You notice a lot of the berms getting so deep that riders can't use them anymore. All right, well, coming down that downhill, you get a great shot of about four or five of them on the inside. It happened earlier in the day during qualifying and practice, and riders are like, forget it. I'm not going to go in there and lose a foot peg or my toe. They just go to the outside. It's, so it's a few places out there that, that uh, are going to develop into a little bit of one-line situation, but still a great place, a uh, great track for passing, a lot of air time. And for the spectators, now they got a better viewing of the racetrack than the mechanics do, according to Allie. <laughs> Huffman right here, still following Casey Johnson. Unable to get around, trying to use a little different line here and there, but it seems to me like at the moment, Huffman may be just a little bit quicker than Johnson. And if he was able to get around, he may be able to challenge Carmichael, but uh, for the moment, Carmichael is just pulling away about a second a lap. So after that finish line jump, they've just completed and around the chicanes here, going toward the mechanics area. This is really the only area the mechanics can see their riders on this track. As they drop down this hill and turn the corner, they quickly move out of sight. Right now, here in the second moto, let's take a look at our field summary. Carmichael, Johnson, and Huffman, the top three. We're back at Butts Creek, Maryland, the picturesque track and a historic track as far as motocross is concerned. We take a look now behind Ricky Carmichael, our leader here in moto number two. Michael Craig in fourth place, trying to catch up. To Damon Huffman and Casey Johnson. Guys really coming up the face of that jump, hard on the brakes. Huffman jumping pretty far down that hill, making up a little time. Inside, Michael Craig getting by Damon Huffman. Craig just the more aggressive, David. Well, it looked like Huffman had a great drive off the top of that hill into the corner, but Craig just blitzed the corner and had got a great drive coming back around. And what an easy pass. He's been studying the lines of Huffman for the past couple of laps and just found an opening. See if he can do it again to Johnson. Michael Craig gunning for a good overall here at Bud's Creek. And what a pleasure this week as far as the weather when you compare it to our last event. <laughs> it was horrible. And it looked like it was going to do the same thing. The weather has been threatening here. The track has been dumped on. It's surprising uh, how dry it actually got. It tells you how hot it is out there. 
Michael Craig with good form. Damon Huffman behind him. He's got Casey Johnson in front of him. The Pro Circuit versus Honda of Troy right here. You can just see it in a rider, too. When they start to feel it a little bit, get on a roll, get a little confidence, start working their way to the front, the adrenaline's pumping. You can see it in Craig right now, just in his, in, uh, his posture, the way he's sitting on the bike, how hard he's gassing it. He wants to get around these guys and ch go chase Carmichael. And you notice no one is in sight in front of them. Ricky Carmichael so far out in front now with about an 8 to 10 second lead. Brock Sellers is down, shaking his head. Tough luck in the first moto. Likewise here in the second. So he's going to stand there and think about it a little while before he gets back on, if he even does. Obviously shook himself up pretty good, and Craig still keeping the pressure on Johnson. Johnson's getting more and more comfortable with this, uh, with getting better starts, especially here today, having a chance to run out there in the first moto and just kind of see what it's like. He said he got a little pumped up, and sometimes uh, you get a guy on your tail and puts pressure on you, and if he doesn't really make a bid, eventually you just get comfortable with it, and after a while, even though he's close to you, he doesn't bother you anymore, so you know he hasn't stuck a wheel in anywhere, but he sticks one in there, gets oh, it boy, done. Oh, does he ever. Michael Craig looking back to Casey Johnson before cutting into this next turn. That's important. When you start putting the pressure on the guy, you got to make something happen. Eventually, like I was saying, they stop worrying about you. You're there. But uh, I can remember guys like Jeff Ward, Brock Glover. They were, they were the type that wouldn't really come in and stick a wheel in on me like Hannah or Johnson. So uh, if they didn't pass me in the first two or three laps uh, putting that pressure on, I just forget about them and start focusing on my own race. Here's the train behind our leader, Ricky Carmichael. The caboose of the train, Stefan Roncata. Look at Huffman charge into that corner. Whoa, Casey of Johnson on the inside. It's about eight berms through that corner, it looks like. Both Huffman these guys. Really stepping it up. Yeah, they went over that jump, both of them really front end high. If one of them had had that front end a little lower and was able to get the back end just over the top of that, that second jump there, get on the gas, that would have really made a difference. Probably could have, uh, Huffman could have made a pass stick right there. He had to just jump with that bike a little more flat. The battles for second place. Ron Cott is really an interesting story. This is one of his finest performances this year, but he's coming off a second place overall in the mud at Mount Morris. More like his races in Europe. He had a 3-2 for a second overall there. Really impressive, I thought, in his first professional season in America in the Supercross ranks. Everything's just so exciting for him. He loves it here in the United States, especially California. I've seen some articles uh, on him and talking about how much he loves the there's the surfing and the weather and look oh the, right there Huffman down the inside makes a great move and Johnson. Casey Johnson not quite the uh, initial explosion off that hill that Wyndham would get for instance as we take a look at our Suzuki stopwatch for the interval between first and way back second place and this is growing one or two seconds a lap well, approximately 13 seconds back before we have the freight train for second place. Right here, Roncada's got a, he can see up the track on some of the portions right up to his teammate Craig. It's not uh, impossible for him to work his way into second before the end of this moto because he does come on strong late in the race. Back to Roncada, total different situation than Jean-Michel Bale or even that of Mikel Pichon who was so uh, homesick for uh, France and his family. Uh, Roncada's got most of his family with him in California, and they're just having a ball. Seems to be just the opposite for him. He doesn't want to go home. He wants to stay here and eat an In-N-Out burger and go surfing and, <laughs> and uh, look at all the pretty women out in California, I think. How about that big cowboy hat he sported at the banquet uh, at the pay sports management after the Supercross season? He was decked out in Western uh, attire. So Stefan Roncada getting into it not only as far as the culture of America is concerned, but Certainly has done a good job in his initial year. Ron Cotta hopping in front of Casey Johnson there as we speak of him. Number 112. He's not going to have that number plate next year. No, he's going to chop a digit off of there. It's going to be pretty low. He seems to be committed to racing here in the States. You know, I don't think he's going to be happy until there's a big number one on there. Coming around that corner that Ferry went down earlier. Ron Cotta and Casey Johnson battling it out. Our leader still by a long way. Ricky Carmichael.
win a trip to California to ride with Team 1-800-COLLECT. It's easy. Every completed 1-800-COLLECT call you make by July 31st automatically enters you to ride with McGrath and Albertine. Those two riders, 250 riders, they're coming up next. We're in the second 125 moto right now, and Kevin Windham is battling to get up through the ranks. Carmichael is our leader if you've just joined us here at Bud's Creek. And he just went around, uh, crashed, looked like uh, Roncata there at the bottom of that off camber. There he is, he's just getting going, so that's one less rider Windham will have to pass on his way to the front. Kevin Windham, just a really bad break in the first uh, moto losing a chain when he was out in front and he had a pretty sizable lead at the time so far here in moto two he's holding in there after a slower start ricky carmichael is our leader number 70 he's having fun and he's mr clean this moto too i don't even know if he's used a tearaway yet spick and span uh, gotta be nerve-wracking for the mechanics about this time with such a big lead what can happen next let's go to marty with chad watts Chad, the first moto, he had to be patient. He didn't get the great start. He still got through the field. This time, he's killing everybody. He's got a 14-second lead right now. Yeah, first moto, he rode really smart. It has a tendency when he gets the whole shot, he's definitely not afraid to pull a big lead. And uh, by doing this, the last 10 minutes, he can back it down a second to a lap and still win by 10 or 12 seconds. And uh, it really works out good that way. Makes life easy for you, doesn't it? Life's not easy to see the checkered flag. <laughs> you bet your life. Anything can happen in motocross, and usually does. I think we're already seeing signs of what Chad was talking about. Where Carmichael at the moment, to me, it looks like he's only riding about 80%. Look how slow he just crested that top of that hill. He's just floating around the track, and that's the luxury he had when he built a big lead like that early. Earlier, RC looked back over his first full professional year for us. And this is what he had to say. Well, you know, this is my first year, and I'm, I'm happy, you know, I've been leading it this far, so, you know, of course I want to keep the points lead, but, you know, I'm going to go out there and give it 100%. It doesn't matter if I'm in the points lead or I'm in dead last, I always give it 100%, so I'm just going to try to put the points thing behind me, you know, that even though he's two points behind me and I had a big lead, I don't now, you know, it's over and done with. I'm just going to try to recorrect and win some more motos. And David, we reiterate, that was recorded earlier because he's got the bigger lead right now. He's got a huge lead here in Moto2. It's got to be a little frustrating for a guy like Wyndham. Uh, been out there for a long time. This is actually his third season, but his second full season out there in the 125 outdoors, and then to, to uh, be struggling like he is this year and have Carmichael just kind of walk right in and lead the points like he has and stretch it out. It looks like he's a sure thing for winning this title with what's happened to Wyndham now. And it's, you know it's important to Wyndham because that rivalry in the 125 shootout at Las Vegas, boy, they, they really went after it. And that was considered a very prestigious title as far as Wyndham was concerned. Well, he got the upper hand and he knew that he was going to be moving on to the 250s after that. And he wanted to make sure that he beat this little kid. Little freckle-faced redhead kid coming out of nowhere. There's no way you're going to beat me in my, my game. And, of course, riders coming up through the ranks, the grassroots, uh, it is motocross. They have to make a big adjustment to supercross where your technique and your jumping ability is more important. Right here, it's endurance and being able to handle this tremendous natural terrain with speed. And a little bit different style, too, from, from uh, Wyndham versus Carmichael. They both ride really smooth and float over the bumps. They, they're very smart out there on the racetrack, but a little different, and the, their size dictates that difference. Right now, the battle for second place is on. Michael Craig, Honda of Troy, number 15. Damon Huffman, Team Kawasaki, he's on the move. Huffman on the inside. Number 17 moving into second place on Michael Craig. This time, Huffman had a little bit better drive come up the hill, but just like earlier when he and Casey Johnson were side by side, this time Huffman kept that bike flatter, got a good drive. Let's go to Marty. Brian, I'm telling you, he's giving it a great ride, closing here and taking second place. Well, yeah, he had a little bit of problem early in the race. He kind of a slow start once he got going, but uh, now he's catching, catching up to everybody, pulling away. Hopefully he can stay in front of Wyndham. I would imagine it's just as frustrating for a mechanic like Brian Lunnis whose rider Damon Huffman got injured after winning the Supercross in Atlanta and then the untimely injury having to sit out all that time but it's good to see him coming back right now. Kevin Windham is on the move. Also not in our camera range yet but Robbie Raynard is starting to make his presence felt. 
Raynard has just basically hitched a ride with Wyndham, both of them with horrible starts, and they've come through the pack together. They both got a great pace. Of course, Wyndham's the one we're looking at at the moment, but uh, they're going to the front. It's too bad they got bad starts. This could have been a real battle, and I think they could have given uh, Carmichael a run for his money. Bobby Raynard just about three seconds behind Kevin Wyndham, number seven right now. Of course, getting chopped up quite a bit. Look at the way he had the lean to stay on the course. He's trying to keep his balance. And the guys that are real picky out there, Wyndham's one of them. He's very smooth, and it's six inches one way or the other makes a huge difference out there. Trying to catch up with Michael Craig as we take a look at our Suzuki Field summary. Robbie Raynard's moved up to fifth. The race to the checkers is on for Ricky Carmichael. Welcome back to Bud's Creek, the final lap of our second 125 moto. Ricky Carmichael has a huge lead, but this battle's for third now. Michael Craig, losing second place, now is trying to hold on to a podium spot. Wyndham, though, all kinds of pressure. Right behind Wyndham is Robbie Raynard. So Craig has got his work cut out for him. He looks, tries to push him, nudge him a little bit to the outside, but it doesn't bother Wyndham at all. Boy, Craig was in a no-win situation right there. If he went wide, Wyndham could cut to the inside. If he, if he went to the inside, well, that's what he tried to do. He, he tried to bluff him a little bit, and Wyndham said, forget it, man. I'm going right around you. He actually had to tuck his elbow in right there to just get around the handlebar of Craig, but made that pass stick. Great ride so far back. Wyndham now in third. Interesting to see what Robbie Raynard can do with Michael Craig next as they bounce off those ruts. Here's our leader, number 70, cutting through the lappers. Ricky Carmichael looks back, and all he can see is lappers. Well, he's got a great big lead. He can afford to acknowledge the crowd and cruise in. He's back in that 80% uh, cruise control mode again. And for Wyndham, you got to be frustrated. And, I mean, it, of course, the obvious. But then you come into the pits, and everyone's going, man, you're riding so good. Boy, if you got a better start, and you're thinking, yeah, well, if my bike wouldn't have broke down the first moto, I would have had a better start. I had a better look at the first corner from where I lined up. And it's just been that story week after week of, boy, what if? And uh, for this kid here, Carmichael, it's, he's just taking the bull by the horns and got a great big lead in the championship now, his first time out. On the final lap, Ricky Carmichael looking for the sweep. We don't dare take our cameras off Ricky Carmichael if something should happen. But uh, behind, Raynard has already passed Craig into Foy. I wonder what Carmichael's looking over at. He knows he's got a big lead, but what I may, what he may be looking at is he's wondering who's in set. He's doing the math, and right now he's going, okay, is Wyndham going to make it all the way into second? Nope. Okay, well, that's five points instead of three I'm going to gain on him. Our computer shows us that Scott Sheik is in 14th as Ricky Carmichael takes the checkers, his third time for a 1-1 sweep. Rainer finishing in fourth, and a good top 10 performance by the privateer Ron Titchener in ninth. Parties with our winner. Well, down here in Victory Lane, I, I, you just destroyed this field. When you get the start, it, you, if you don't make a major blunder, you're just killing these guys. Well, uh, you know, I get when I get a good start, it is better for me because there's nobody in front of me and I can open up same way with you know anybody who pulls the whole shot you know Kevin's really good at that too but this weekend I got the whole shot the second moto and you know put in some good laps the first the first few laps I put in some good ones and was able to maintain it you know I pulled away even more towards the end what's even more important is you've opened up a bigger gap in the points lead too uh well I guess that last weekend wasn't my weekend and this weekend was, you know, I, I tried hard for this race and I'm glad I could do 1-1. Ricky Carmichael making it look easy against everyone else as we take a look at the Suzuki overall standings. Damon Huffman in second, Casey Johnson in third, and look at Ron Titchener. That's an encouraging sign. Now it's back to Marty. I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but you promised the podium and uh, by golly, you got it. Second overall, second in this moto. Yeah. Um... I'm real happy with the way things went, and uh, my Kawasaki was just awesome up the hills all day long. And uh, every start, I was like top two, pull shot in my qualifiers, and uh, really happy. You know, those two weeks off finally, you know, got me back to 100%. And uh, you know, I think from here on out, I got a good mind, and uh, I'm going to keep it up. I guess my only question would be, what do you do to stop Carmichael? Well. Uh, 
I'm not too sure. Uh, I, I think I can still get a little faster yet, but uh, definitely a little stronger. <clears throat> but uh, I don't know, him being on a Kawasaki, it's gonna be hard to do. Great run. Thank you. Number 70, Ricky Carmichael, came into the day with only a two-point lead. He leaves with a 45-point advantage as his big competitors, Team Honda Scott Sheik and Kevin Windham of Team Yamaha, drop further behind. After his maddening 13th overall at Mount Morris, Ricky Carmichael comes back. He said, I'll blow those guys away, and he did just that, as the frustrations mount for Scott Sheik and, again, Kevin Windham. We'll be back with 250 action from Bud's Creek right after this.